So guys, welcome back to another video. We're gonna do another one take uh, screen share video here with the Remarkable. There's some really important things I wanna walk you through. My goal here is to kind of shed some light on some of these new business models that you've probably been seeing pushed online. You know, some of which we've got IPGA, which has become kind of popular the last few weeks. Uh, we have another big creator talking about drop servicing. We have other things that have been in the works for a while now, uh, such as a growth partner, or you might have heard the term a growth operator. And ultimately, all of these are being essentially touted as new, right? This is the big shiny word, being touted as new, a new business model. And realistically, they're not. They're not new business models. And I'll talk about each one in detail during this video. But this is the most important part. I want to save you some time. These are not new business models. They're tiny, tiny variations of an established business model that we've seen for years. But they've been put with a new label because they're pushed by marketers. Okay, I'm a marketer. Okay, so it's genius. I think what all of these guys, the people that are pushing these narratives, are doing is really, really smart marketing. They're essentially packaging something that you've already seen, changing a tiny, tiny element, let's say like 5%, 10% of it, but it's now this whole new thing. And when there's a new thing, there's a new opportunity to sell you a new program, a new masterclass, whatever it may be. So I'm gonna walk you through each of the models here and how they're not brand new and how you probably know about them already, okay? So we're gonna dive deep in this video. So this is problem numero uno, biggest problem. They're not new business models and you need to be aware of this. Now, problem number two, which we're gonna talk about now, is essentially that these are ignoring this thing, skills, right? The skills that you would learn from, let's just say SMMA, a social media marketing agency. The skills you learn from that are the same skills that you would use for growth operating, growth partner, drop servicing, and IPGA. There's, of course, again, a tiny difference with each one, but the 90, 95% that you're gonna need come from this thing right here. And it's why, you know, I teach this, but really what I teach people is MSO. These are the three components of a social media marketing agency. And these three components, guess what? <laughs> these are in all of these new business models, all right? So this is marketing, okay? So M for marketing, S is sales, and O is operations, okay? So let's just do it. Let's run through each of these business models. Let me show you how they're not new, and I'm gonna show you for each of these points, okay? So we got that, we got marketing, sales, and operations. These are literally the three parts. When we look at SMMA, okay, we're just gonna move this around so that you can see this better. All right, fantastic. So let's start with SMMA, all right? What is marketing? Marketing is typically outreach. This is reaching out to business owners, trying to get their attention. This is you marketing yourself. This is outreach. This is using platforms like Upwork. This is using a personal brand, right? Posting your own content to get leads to come to you. These are all marketing. Sales is sales, all right? Sales calls follow-ups, all right? So you have a call with someone, you have them in a follow-up sequence for weeks, if not months, to eventually get them to close on whatever you're selling. And there's other parts of the process as well when it comes to sales, okay? Follow-ups, sales calls, these are the main points. Operations is essentially service delivery, all right? This is delivering your service. So you sell someone content creation, video editing, social media management, Facebook ads, whatever, you've got to deliver that service. This has two routes. You have route one, which is what we call the freelancer approach. You do everything yourself, all right? So you learn video editing, you edit the videos for your clients, they pay you directly, fantastic. This is what we normally look at, 100% profit margin. You get paid, you keep all the money. And number two is the agency route, okay? So agency route essentially means Okay, you might know how to do video editing, but you're not gonna do it. You will manage the video editing, you'll make sure the client gets what they paid for, you make sure they're happy, but you essentially are hiring somebody else under you 
to do some of the work, okay? So this is SOMA, and you can see exactly what this looks like. If you're curious, profit margin in and around 70% at scale. So let's move on to number two. We're gonna look at drop servicing. This has been around for a while. People have talked about this for years, um, but recently someone very big in the space has talked about it. So there's going to be a massive amount of people seeing drop servicing and thinking it is a brand new thing, a thing that never existed before. And there's only one way to learn it. And that's true. One person, which isn't the case. All right. So when it comes to marketing for drop servicing, it is the same as we looked at, right? It's Drop servicing is the exact same as SMMA. Literally, it's just the agency model, right? Like that is the only difference. So everything we looked at, Upwork, Outreach, Personal Brands, it's all the same. Sales, sales goals, follow-ups, like all the exact same. Operations, the only difference is, as I just mentioned, instead of having two routes where you could do freelancer or agency, drop servicing is agency. Now, the thing about drop servicing that a lot of you might, you might fall into this trap is you might think it's client pays $1,000 for a website. You go find John, John charges $150, you profit $850, and you imagine that you hire John, pay John, and that's end of communication. This is not the reality, all right? SMMA in its, in its form is essentially you becoming a uh, client manager or a project manager, right? And this is the same for drop servicing, all right? Don't get this wrong, okay? This is the exact same. It's not as easy as client pays you on Monday, you pay John, your freelancer, on Tuesday, and then you're done. Like the project is done complete and you just banked 850. It's not the case. If I was to sell you SMMA on that basis, it would be easier, but there's a nuance within it, and that is the fact that you have to manage the project. The project has to get done. So even when I pay, let's say I have a video editor and I pay him to edit 10 videos for one of my clients, I, like that's not the end of the conversation, right? I need to check back in, make sure he made the videos. I'll then check the videos, make sure they look good. I'll send the videos to the client, ask the client if they want any changes, go back to my editor, and that's a lot more than just finding a guy paying him and you're done, right? Like connecting the two. So this is the thing you need to know, okay, for drop servicing and keep that in mind. Now, next up, we're going to look at IPGA. Okay, so if you're unaware of what IPGA is, it's essentially Info Product Growth Agency. Essentially what you're doing is you're doing SMMA but you're doing it for somebody who has a personal brand. Let's say you find a guy on TikTok, he talks all about productivity and fitness and health and you know self-improvement. And your job is to essentially partner with him, typically 50-50, um, you'll build out a course for him, you'll launch it, you'll market it, you'll potentially build out the entire course, you'll do everything, sales funnels, email marketing, all of that, all he has to do is be the face of it, push it on his social media, and voila, you'll make money. Now, there's two problems that I'm going to talk about. Uh, problem one is it's the same, all right? The marketing, the sales, the operations, it's basically the same thing, all right? You can do all this yourself, and then you're just a freelancer, or you do it with an agency model, all right? Like, <laughs> I can't stress it enough, guys. The same skills you'd learn in SMA is the same that you would do for this. Now, I said there was two problems, so let's talk about it. Problem one is you have to be a wizard. You've got to know everything. You see, if I am going to build out a course, you see, I got to learn how to make the slides for the course. I got to learn how to record. I've got to learn how to edit. I've got to learn where to host the videos. I've got to learn how to send the login information to the course to customers. I've got to learn how to build a funnel or a checkout page where people can buy it. I've got to make sure that when they buy it, they actually get it. All right. So when they make a purchase that they get sent the info and there's like a hundred other things you got to do. So that's problem number one is you got to become a, a wizard essentially, right? Like with SMMA, the beauty of it, and this is why I stress it a lot, is the fact that you can do one thing. You can learn how to edit videos really well. And that is the thing you do. You just edit videos for your clients. You don't do ads. You don't do emails. You don't do SEO. You do the one thing. And this means it's easy to get up and running. 
it means that you can get this level of expertise, right? You can actually become good at that one thing. Trust me, trying to become good at all the components of an online business, right? Like emails, funnels, ads, customer delivery. That's really fucking difficult. And when you then build a team, it's much, trust me, it is much easier to hire a team of freelancers who are video editors, and that's all they do, rather than one video editor, one funnel builder, one copywriter, one salesperson. The list goes on. You're now like way out of your depth, like super out of your depth. So that is the biggest problem that people are probably not going to see. Problem two is why? Why would a business, or let's just say a guy who has 100,000 followers, who's not making any money from it, why would he give you 50% of his business? And okay, you might argue, well, maybe he'll give me 20%. Well, why is he ever going to do this? Yes, you could come in with the expertise that he doesn't have, but couldn't he just pay a bunch of freelancers like you're going to do? Yes. Is he going to do that? Maybe not. Fair point. My point here really is that even if this works, okay, and he says, yep, fantastic, let's do it, and you get him, let's say, 10K per month in revenue, okay, so you take 50%. Trust me, he's not going to feel very good giving you 50%. Like, there's going to come a point, and maybe it only kicks in after one month or two months, but there will be a point where most of your work is done, like you've already built the course, You've already built the funnels. You've already built the email marketing flows. And there's not a whole lot left for you to do. But he's still going to be giving you 50% of the revenue. Five grand a month. That could be his. I just know from experience working with clients, there's going to come a point where he does not like this. And then maybe you say, okay, well, then we drop down and it's 20%. Yeah, maybe. But if this is going to go on for five years, like if I'm that guy, I'm going to be thinking, man, this is basically like just paying a shit ton of taxes, right? Like there's a better way to do this by building out his own team or learning those himself. So this is the, the big problem I see with IPGA and this is why I don't think this is gonna work for many people. And some people this will work for. There's a, a third reason that it most likely won't work that people won't talk about, which is the fact that if you're doing, as I mentioned, like let's just put it down. You're basically doing full stack marketing, which means like all the parts of marketing, not just one part. You're doing full stack marketing, not just for one client, because if you just do it for one client, you're then reliant on one client. Okay. So if we look at this scenario where the guy is paying you 50%, five grand a month, and he's annoyed, well, he, he might just like, you know, resend your contract. He might break the contract. Yeah. You could try and sue him, but that's going to take years to resolve. So your income is most likely going to go to zero or it goes down to 1K or 2K. So you're going to then say, yeah, Adam, that's why we'll work with two clients, three clients, four clients, five. But to be honest, unless you're working with clients in different niches, there's going to be competition. Like if I was your client and then so were 10 other guys that built an SMMA agency and then teach people how to do it. Like there's going to be direct competition between all of us and that's, that's going to be tough. You know, that's going to be pretty tough to navigate. Um, so then of course, yes, you could work with different niches, but too many niches, man. And you're just going to burn out, right? Like you're working with a fitness guy. You're working with an SMMA guy. You're working with a, a crypto dude. Like you've got to learn how to do emails for crypto. SMA fitness, how to do a sales call about a fitness program, an SMA program, crypto. They are all quite different. Like, trust me, they're, they're very different things. So I just think there's a lot of complication that comes with IPGA that you're probably not going to see. And then again, that's just the way it's marketed and it's good marketing. I can't fault it. You know, it's good marketing. So it is what it is. Now up here, I also mentioned there was some other things that we wanted to look at. We had um, growth partner, growth operating. These are essentially the same as IPGA. The, the premise is partner with somebody who's going to sell an info product and either they already sell it and you just help them improve it, which is basically just do better marketing, get them more views on social media, bring more leads into their funnel, and then they get more customers or actually building out the entire thing. And I think from my short ramble here, you might have a clearer picture on how it might not seem as good as it was once presented to you. Like personally, if I was starting off as a beginner, 
I would find this really overwhelming, like really overwhelming, man. Like, think about it. You got to learn click funnels. You got to learn video editing in Premiere Pro. You got to learn how to write good copies, like captions and copy. You got to learn email marketing with an email marketing software. Like, there's just so much to it. There really is. Now, if you're really experienced, right? Like, for example, if somebody had run an SMMA for two years or something, right? Worked with 20, 30, 40 clients, and you've gotten really great results for your clients, you know, then this thing actually looks quite better, in my opinion, because you probably already have a lot of the skills needed to jump into this. Whereas when we look at SMMA, the reason I recommend it to beginners is because there's not that many skills. Okay, there's the, sorry, I did that wrong. MSO, we looked at, you gotta learn how to market yourself through Upwork or through cold outreach or build a personal brand. Okay, fair enough, that's a skill set you gotta learn. You gotta learn how to sell. You're just gonna learn how to sell by practice. And then the operations, which is delivering the service. Again, you can hire somebody to do it or you learn it yourself. It's a lot less complex. It's probably, you know, if we're gonna compare them, right? If we're rating this at 10 out of 10 complexity, this is like a two to three, in my opinion. Now, are there other business models that are lower that are two or three out of 10? Probably, but I can't really think of any. And even if I could think of one, I'm like, hmm, I bet you there's some other cons, such as really low profit margins, very high startup costs. There's probably going to be some other massive barrier to entry, which you don't have with this. This thing you can start with zero. So there you have it, guys. That's the breakdown, and my goal for you is to hopefully hear this and, and realize when you see the next shiny model, business model, opportunity, look into it, all right? Like, like think through it fully, you know, be really critical, because most times they're all the same. Like, th they all come down to these three areas that you need to learn, M, S, and O. Marketing, which is getting leads, getting people to see your stuff. Sales, learning how to convert the people to see your stuff, to buy your stuff, and then operations, which is delivering the thing that they bought. These are the three components, and every opportunity you see is going to fall into these. So if you can just think when you see an opportunity, run it through this, you'll get clarity on if it's for you. It might be, but please do look into the complexity. All right, so anyway, hopefully you enjoy the video. Um, if you do want to work with me directly, where I'll actually coach you, on these things, on MSO, how you, how you can do that. We do focus mainly on SMMA, but I've built a personal brand. I've worked with a lot of fitness coaches, over 100 in my agency. So the way in which we're going to teach it to you is not just strictly about SMMA, right? It's going to be teaching you the skills more so, so that you can then use that for SMMA, but also if you want to have your own personal brand, if you want to do coaching, consulting, it also ties in to there. So if you want info on that, you'll see a link in the description of the video where you can book a call with me. There's no pressure to do it. Just wanted to let you know, as I know a lot of you who watch these videos are thinking, cool, great, Adam, I like your, your perspective. I like your opinion on this. I'd like to learn from you. And that is how you can learn from me. Okay, have a great rest of your day and we'll talk soon.